Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for joining me back here in my kitchen for another recipe video. I'm Derek from Simnet Nutrition and today I'm excited to share this one with you guys. I have a banger. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this high protein veggie crumble. So as usual, I've gone and I put the recipe in the description down below for you guys, but don't just go down there and copy and paste it and like peace out. <laughs> Please watch this video. I put a lot of work into it and uh, yeah, I really appreciate it and thank you guys learned a few things. So let's get making this. So the reason why I'm making this video today, sort of the inspiration for this video is because I often use veggie crumble in my cooking and I share a lot of my recipes and my meals on my stories on Instagram and you guys always DM me asking, wow, Derek, I need the recipes for that seconds. crumble. And the truth is, it is a store-bought crumble. So I figured rather than, you know, just telling you guys what this is, having you go and try and find it in the stores around you, why don't I just kind of reverse engineer it, which is basically just me like looking at the ingredients and trying to figure out the amounts and share the recipe with you guys. So that is what I'm doing here today. And if you follow this channel and you eat similarly to me, you probably have all these ingredients on hand already. So this is a super good recipe. Like I said in the beginning, really versatile. You can use it for so many different things and it's actually a fairly low carb option, which isn't usually something we do on this channel. However, it just happens to be low carb. I'm probably gonna be having it with a whole bunch of carbs, but it's up to you guys what you do with it. So yeah, let me show you how to make this. Let's get started. So as the base of this recipe, we're actually going to be using TVP. So if you guys have never heard of this, it actually stands for Totally Vegan Protein. <laughs> no, it doesn't, I'm just kidding. It stands for Textured Vegetable Protein. And the vegetable that they're using is soy. Uh, I don't know if you guys know of the Butler Soy Curls, but it's basically the same thing. However, these are just like much smaller. Um, so they're like dry right now and kind of like crunchy, uh, but once you rehydrate them, season them and cook them up, they actually get like this really like meaty, chewy texture. So it's absolutely perfect for a dish like this. So we're just gonna start off by soaking one cup of TVP in a bunch of water. So we'll soak up quite a bit of water. You just wanna soak it in basically twice the amount of water that there is TVP. So I'm just gonna put this aside for about 10 minutes or so. That'll be more than enough time for it to soak up an adequate amount of water. Uh, I just wanna let you guys know, if you don't wanna use TVP or if you can't find it or whatever, you could always use tofu. You could use tempeh as well. Those would be like two really easy sub-ins. Uh, but you could also use like chickpeas. If you have like a can of chickpeas or whatever, you could throw that in here instead. Uh, you could also use like lentils, probably a whole bunch of stuff, but today I'm using TVP. All right, so while we're waiting for that, we're actually gonna be putting some of the ingredients into a food processor. So you kind of do need a food processor for this. You could probably try and use like a blender or you could chop everything up really small and it would probably work the same. I mean, it's gonna taste very similar, um, but it just won't be the same texture. So we're gonna be putting a bunch of stuff in our new food processor. And we actually just got this Ninja one the other day and it has been so good to us. Not sponsored or anything, just wanted to let you guys know because we've been through a bunch of really crappy food processors and some that like weren't even that cheap. Uh, and it wasn't until we got this one that we were like, you know what, this is actually what a good food processor should be like. So I just wanted to let you guys know in case you're looking for one. So this is sort of like the vegetable portion of the crumble. This is everything that's going in there. So half of a red pepper, one full stalk of green onion, a half a cup of green peas. These are thawed. If you put totally frozen green peas into a food processor, it doesn't really break them up very well. So yeah, thawed green peas. There's like Hulk smash and then there's vegan smash. So two cloves of fresh garlic. A quarter of a red onion, although it's purple. And then one half a cup of broccoli. Next, we're going to be adding some nuts and seeds to this. Uh, you don't have to use these exactly, like if you are allergic to them or if there's something else that you prefer, you could use those, but I'm gonna be using a half a cup of walnuts. <laughs> this is hard to, like, what the heck? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why was that so hard for me? A half a cup of sunflower seeds. Okay, so now that we have this all full of goodness, I'm gonna put that aside for a second, and we have got to get some spices and seasonings together because we've gotta flavor this. It's gotta taste good in order for it to get down the old hatch. So here's what I'm putting in it. Okay, so here's all the spices and seasonings I'm putting in here, pretty standard issue. A quarter cup of nutritional yeast. Two teaspoons of garlic powder. And yo, just wanna give a quick shout out to the subscriber who sent us these amazing 
teaspoons, or measuring spoons, I should say. They saw that I couldn't get the measuring spoons that we had into our little spice containers here, so they sent us these like extra special skinny ones. So I just wanna say thank you so much. I appreciate that, it's so kind. Two teaspoons of onion powder. One and a half teaspoons of black pepper. Of course, you could always add more or less of any of these things to your taste. And then one and a half teaspoons of smoked paprika. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then you just want to mix all that up so it's nice and uniform. So now that we have the seasoning all together, we're gonna put that aside for a second and we're gonna go back to the soaking TVP. And we just wanna get rid of all this water and we actually wanna squeeze the excess water out of the TVP because they're like, kind of like little sponges. They hold onto water really well, but you wanna get rid of that water so that we can introduce some flavors into there and have it not be like soggy. So I just like to squeeze it against the strainer like this and it helps to get the liquid out. But if you don't have a strainer like this, you can just grab a bunch of it and just kind of squeeze it between your hands, get some of the water out, and then back into the bowl. So next you want to add about half of the seasoning mix to the TVP. And I'm also going to be adding a teaspoon of Bragg's. If you don't have this, you could use like soy sauce or tamari instead, it would work just fine. But this gives like a really nice sort of deep umami flavor they call it and uh, if you guys don't know about umami well you should check it out because it's an amazing flavor <laughs> it basically tastes like that so you just want to work the flavors into it and you actually kind of want to like squish it in between your hands a bit because this will help the flavors get like right inside so you could actually just stop here. Like this is an amazing little TVP recipe just on its own. You could just throw this into a stir fry. Uh, you could just saute it as is. You could put it into some pasta sauce or whatever. However, I want to keep it, kick it up a notch. More flavor, more nutrition. You guys know how it is around here. So uh, let's keep going with this recipe. So the next step is we're just going to add the rest of the seasoning to the food processor. And then I'm just going to pulse it until it is kind of, you know, all uniform. Okay, so that is looking like a really good consistency. So next we're going to just add the TVP to this. And I'm also going to be adding a teaspoon of maple syrup to this. So this is obviously optional, um, but when I, I made it a few times yesterday and I definitely liked the one with a touch of maple syrup in it a little bit better. So one teaspoon of maple syrup doesn't make it sweet, but it just adds like a really nice little flavor to it. And now we'll just pulse this until it's all mixed up. So I'm actually just gonna give it a quick little mix just to make sure everything's getting mixed up. Okay, so once it's all mixed up, it should look something like this. And of course you could eat it raw like this if you wanted, but I'm going to be baking it. Mm. It's actually so good like that. So when I was testing this recipe, I actually did try it both on the stove top, like sauteing it and in the oven. And in the oven on a baking tray, it was like so much better. So, you know, do what you want with this, but I'm gonna be baking it in the oven at around 350 to 375 degrees for a total of about 40 minutes. I know it seems like a long time, but you don't have to do anything while it's cooking. <laughs> but you do have to actually come back once in the middle and just give it a little um, stir, just so that, you know, the everything mixes up and cooks evenly. So you might have noticed we have this little sheet down. This is a silicone mat. They're great for uh, cooking and baking and stuff in the oven. Basically takes the place of like parchment paper, uh, but you can use it over and over again and nothing sticks to it. So it's really awesome. So you just want to spread it out as evenly as you can. You don't want to pack it down because you just want as much sort of like air getting in here and cooking everything as possible. So there I have everything all spread out on the baking tray. I'm just gonna whack it in the oven for the first 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna pull it out, mix everything up, put it back in for another 20. So I figured while that's cooking, I would plug everything into a chronometer really quickly and we could go over the macros and the micros and see what we're getting out of this little recipe. So assuming that you split it into four parts, you'd be getting around 
330 calories, you get 24 grams of carbohydrates, only 14.2 grams of net carbs. Low carbers rejoice! And then you can see there's almost 24 grams of protein in it, and then yeah, lots of B vitamins, lots of minerals as well. So look at that, almost half, or actually more than half of your RDI of iron. Good amount of zinc in that too. So there you go, I figured you guys would be interested in that, so now you know the macros. So the outsides of things like this always seem to cook quicker than the inside. So you kind of want to just like get the outside to the inside, and the inside to the outside. Just mix it up, whatever. All right, so it is all done and it looks a little burned, but it's not, I promise you guys. You could cook it for a little less time though. Like I think absolutely perfect would be 20 minutes at the beginning, stir it, and then 15 minutes at the end. But it's so nice and crispy and chewy and everything like this. Let me have a bite and I'll let you guys know how it is. Oh yeah, wow. <laughs> it's so good. It's like a little bit chewy, a bit crunchy. There's just so much flavor to it. Man, I really think you guys are gonna like this one. So this is pretty much it, like it is done. You can use it like this however you want. So for instance, I just made a little Buddha bowl while I was cooking all that and just put some, you know, some salad in there, potatoes, a bunch of other veggies and the veggie crumble. This is gonna be super good. And then I've actually just heated up some pasta that we had and I'm going to be adding this to the pasta sauce and then the pasta sauce to this. So let's do that. Oh wow, it's looking good. And then just finish it off with some more crumbles, some green onion, more crumbles. <laughs> All right, let's try this one out as if it's not gonna be amazing. Yeah, it's super good in pasta sauce, holy crap, wow. Okay, so there's two ways that you could use this veggie crumble. I mean, it's so versatile. Like you could also put it on top of salads. You can have it on top of like pizza. If you do homemade pizza, you could put it into like some tacos, add it to chili, or if you want just like a really quick meal and you already have it all made up, just add it to like a can of like lentil soup or something like that. Just like boost up the protein content and the nutrients of it, man. Super good recipe, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's everything for this video. Definitely leave a like if you enjoyed the video and you learned something from it, it helps me out so much. And definitely subscribe so you can see more from me. I'll see you guys soon with another video. Thank you so much for watching, bye.